Okay, hi there. Welcome to the next in our series of videos. Uh, this time we're going to take a, a quick look at what the, the prospects for inflation might be in the UK economy in 2021. Hopefully, as the economy emerges from the economic effects of the pandemic. This chart is taken from the February 2021 Bank of England inflation report. On the top panel, you have the rate of inflation since 2007. And essentially, the rate of inflation has been on a downward trajectory uh, since the spring of 2017. It's been below target now for, for well over a year. Of course, the inflation target for the UK is plus 2%. On the bottom panel, uh, the percentage change in real GDP in national output, the recession, of course, in 2008, 2009, and then the collapse of GDP as the economy went into lockdown in March, just under a year ago. In 2020, a real GDP is forecast or estimated to have fallen by just under 10% in one year. So a severe contraction in the economy. So that's the picture as, as has happened. Some people are thinking and suggesting, some forecasters are saying, uh, that inflation is on the way up in the UK. And indeed, by the end of 2021, could well be above the, the Bank of England's 2% target rate. There was a terrific article uh, in the FT and the FT for schools on the potential spectre of inflation and I'll post a link to that particular article in the comments section of the website. It's a great uh, series, the FT for schools, where teachers provide some interesting questions to go with the article itself. Now this extract, uh, take a moment if you like to, to read it, I'm going to press the pause button. This extract is from the Bank of England's latest monetary policy report where they, they outline what they think is going to happen to inflation. So inflation in the UK is below target. On average, prices were 0.6% uh, higher in the 12 months of December. The main factor that's pulled inflation down is the spread of COVID, falling oil and gas prices, bringing down utility bills for businesses and households, cheaper petrol, Slower growth has probably reduced inflation because when people are not spending as much, firms tend not to increase their prices. And the Bank of England saying that inflation should return to about 2% as these deflationary forces begin to, to fade. Don't forget that the Bank of England is the central bank. They operate monetary policy in the UK. And what that means is they set the main policy interest rates uh, with a view to trying to keep inflation at or around 2% going forward. And uh, that is their inflation target. Now, when they publish their inflation report, they also publish projections of what they think is going to happen in the economy. And this is the famous or well-known fan chart projection for inflation. Basically, this is where we are, uh, forecast going forward into 21, 22, 23. So the red line is the actual rate of inflation, currently below target. The central forecast is the deeper red. So the darker the colour, the more likely the Bank of England thinks inflation is likely to be. And they're forecasting inflation will rise to around 2% going forward. So the fan chart depicts the probability of various outcomes for inflation in the future. There is the possibility of 5% inflation by 2022. Uh, but of course, that light red shade suggests the Bank of England thinks that's unlikely. There's also the possibility of minus 1.5% deflation into 2022-23. There's a possibility of deflation. We're going to cover that in a future video. But again, the light shade suggests the Bank of England thinks that is unlikely. Notice that the fan chart fans out as we go into the future. Even just one or two years ahead, of course, it's much harder to be confident about what's likely to happen. There's a much greater level of uncertainty uh, about inflation, particularly because inflation is often a result of many different forces, both domestic and external, over which the government and the Bank of England has little or no control. So on the left hand side is the, is the same fan chart for inflation. On the right hand side is the Bank of England's fan chart for GDP growth. And again, uh, we're expecting, of course, a dip in growth in the first quarter of 2021. Third, was it the fourth lockdown? Third lockdown 
uh, in the pandemic. The Bank of England is then expecting GDP will recover, perhaps back to the 29, end of 29 level uh, by the, uh, the fourth quarter of this year. So they're predicting an economic rebound in the second half of 2021. But again, even this is only takes us to the end of this year, there's a lot of uncertainty in the forecast. So will inflation pick up? Are we expecting to see a significant rise in inflation in 2021? Well, on the one hand, inflation pessimists, those people who think that inflation will go up, they argue that the, the economy could be a little bit like a coil spring, that once restrictions are lifted, perhaps in the summer of this year, uh, there could well be a surge in consumer spending as lockdown controls are lifted. Millions of people uh, have kept in work because of the furlough and they've built up savings. Will they? Will there be a kind of splurge of spending in the second half of the year? Well, who knows? That could lead to a bit of demand pull inflation. We know that the prices of many world commodities, such as oil and gas and copper, are going up. So we import those things. That could lead to some cost push inflation. We know there are also some supply shortages. We know that many firms have had their supply chains disrupted, not just by Brexit, but also by lockdowns and shortages of labour, including in the farming sector. So perhaps that, the supply constraints, could cause prices to go up. And fourth point is that during the pandemic, the government cut VAT from 20% to 5% for several sectors centred around hospitality and tourism. Now, if that cut in VAT is reversed, then again, that could act as a little impulse causing prices to rebound upwards. So there are four factors thinking that inflation could go up quite a bit. On the other hand, to evaluate, here are factors that might cause the inflation rate to actually stay pretty low in 2021. The first point is, think about where we are. The, we've had a, a deep recession. Yes, there's been lockdowns in production, but GDP is 10% lower than it was a year ago. There is probably quite a bit of spare capacity in the economy, and it's unlikely that you'll see a surge in inflation with the economy just emerging from recession. Second point is that we know that unemployment is going up. It's already at 5.1% of the labour force and is forecast to rise further, particularly if the furlough scheme comes to an end this summer. So increasing unemployment will hit the real spending power of households and put downward pressure on prices. And there's little real risk of a, a big acceleration of wages. Most businesses remain fragile. They've struggled to survive the pandemic and they really can't afford you know, significant wage increases at or above inflation. So there's no real significant risk of wage inflation in the UK. And the last point is an external consideration, and that is that the pound sterling has been actually appreciating against the US dollar in recent weeks and against other currencies, but the dollar in particular. And think of the acronym SPICED. Spiced, strong pound, imports cheaper, exports dearer. Well, a strong pound in the short term helps to keep import prices down and therefore will limit the rise in inflation, particularly the things that we import, including commodities, raw materials and energy. There's a terrific article, a uh, video piece on by The Economist recently, Inflation Could COVID-19 Cause Prices to Rise? And again, definitely worth watching that. I will post a link to that in the comment section of this video. So overall, uh, inflation expected to go up, but we're not expecting a significant surge in inflation uh, in the first half of the second half of 2021. In the next video in our series, we're going to be thinking about the consequences of inflation and think about the economic and the social costs of high inflation.